But I do want to read a passage of Scripture to get us started out of Psalm 85. If you have your Bible, uh, you can turn there with me, Psalm 85. And let's read this together because I feel like it is relevant where we are tonight. And I pray, Holy Spirit, amen, does what only he can do in your life tonight. But Psalm 85, and this is what he said in verse Number. I'm going to begin reading in verse number four because this is my heart. This is my prayer. This is what I want us to pray together uh, about tonight. But beginning in verse number four, the psalmist said, Turn us, O God of our salvation. Cause thine anger toward us to cease. He said, will you be angry with us forever? Will you draw out your anger to all generations? This is my prayer. Will you not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in you? How many long for that tonight? He said, show us your mercy, O Lord. Grant us your salvation. And then in the midst of that prayer, he said in verse 8, I will hear what God the Lord will speak. For he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints. Amen. But let them not turn again to folly. He said, I will hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace unto his people. Amen. Pray with me. Father, thank you for your word, Holy Spirit. I pray that you would open our hearts to hear and to understand. And Lord, I just give you praise for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. And everybody shout amen. Amen. You can be seated tonight. Again, for sake of time, I'm going to dive right into this. And I want to pose a question to you. How many believe hearing the voice of God is important to your faith? How many believe that? So if, well, how many believe it's probably the most important thing, you know, in your life, amen, more important than any other voice? So I follow that with another question. If hearing the voice of God is so very important, then why are we not hearing his voice like we should? Why is it that we, and I say we including myself, why is it that we go through life Many times, I don't want to say blind, but trying to feel our way through life without the real direction from Holy Spirit. How many have ever been there tonight? Come on, let's be honest. We've been needing an answer, and so my question is always this, then Lord, why, why do we not hear the voice of God? Well, I want to unpack that for just a few moments tonight as we really understand the importance of the voice of God in your life. And the first reason that I would say that we don't hear the voice of God is simply this. We really don't take the time to hear the voice of God. God is not like the news media and give you a 30-second soundbite. He's not going to, if you're not willing, if I'm not willing to take the time to spend in his presence, uh, and I know we live in a very busy world, you've got a busy schedule, you have you know, kids, you've got to get to soccer practice, you've got to take care of your house, you've got a career, and, and from the moment that we, we get up in the morning, it seems like we are running, and our schedule is packed, and we've got meetings, and phone calls, and emails, and all of these things that we have to do, that we, at some time in the day, may give God five, six, Six, maybe seven minutes and, you know, hoping the Lord understands how busy we are. But let me tell you something. How many know when we take the time to really listen, how many believe God will take the time to really speak? And that is the problem. We really do not take the time. And I encourage you tonight to understand how brief your life on this earth really is. And I know many times we don't understand that, but James said, your life is like a vapor. He said, it's here for a little while, and then it's gone. I'm 57 years old, and the older I get, the more I know how short my life really is. How many know when you're a kid, when you're a child, how many know life seems like it lasts forever? Amen. But we understand this is a vapor, and, 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 and time is something that we have to be able to give to God. We have to be able to give that. Because, because when you, have you ever been talking to somebody, and the whole time that you're talking to them, they're looking at their watch? What does that make you feel like? You're not important. It makes you feel like that person has a better place to go or maybe somebody better to talk to because, man, oh, you know. How many know we treat God that way sometimes? 
You know, we come into prayer and we've got all of these other things that are on our mind while we're trying to pray. We're thinking about the email we've got to send. We're thinking about, you know, the meeting that's coming up. We're thinking about what I got to get done today. And so we're doing our prayer simply because, well, you know, that's what we do. And, and, and it's almost like we say, okay, Lord, I hope you understand that I've only got a few minutes. So whatever you've got to say, can you say it quickly? <laughs> How many know God doesn't work like that? Anything that is significant in life will take time. It will invest time. It will cause you to slow down. It will cause you to put other things aside. It will cause you to neglect some of the things that you would do so that you can spend time in the presence of your heavenly Father. Am I talking to anybody tonight? Amen. Time, time is something that you cannot, you cannot uh, hold it in your hand. It is not tangible. It's here and then it's gone. Time is one of those things that you cannot, once it's gone, ever get back. You can get money back when somebody steals it, but somebody steals your time. It's forever gone. And so, therefore, that's why the Bible in the, in the, in the, the psalmist, he said, teach us, Lord, to number our days so that we can apply our hearts unto wisdom. And my challenge to you tonight is for you to understand how important it is for you to make time a priority, time with God a priority in your life. And I don't know where your prayer life is. I, I really don't, and I'm not here to even delve into that. But I'm here for you to self-analyze and for you to really examine how much time you are spending with God, how much time you are spending in prayer. Go to Matthew 13. And the Lord gives us a beautiful picture of this in a, in a parable. And I'm, I'm not going to take the time to, to really go deep into the parable. But he's talking, of course, about the seed of the Word of God. And he's giving all the different, you know, analogies of the soils and the types of soil. And the farmer, he is out sowing the seed. And the one type of soil in verse 5, the Bible said, or Jesus is teaching, fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and for with they sprung up because they had no depth or no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched because they had no root, and they withered away. Now, my question is, why was that soil stony and hard and unable to receive the seed that could be rooted into that soil? Why was that soil stony? Do you know? Nobody had taken the time to cultivate that soil. Nobody had taken the time to work the soil and work the stones and work to the place that the soil could receive the seed of God. Because if you look in verse number 19, when anyone heareth, again, the, the, the analogy or the explanation, Jesus said, if you hear the word of the kingdom and understand it not, the wicked one will come and catch away that which was sown in his heart, and this is he which receives seed by the wayside. The Greek word for word is logos, which means a word uttered by a living voice. Now, I want you to think about this. I believe many times we don't receive the word or the voice from God because we have not taken the time to cultivate our spirit so that that spirit, that soil, if I may, is in a place where you can actually receive what God has to say. Am I talking to anybody tonight? We've got so many stones. We've got so many rocks. We've, and I'm talking to myself. So many things, so many issues, uh, amen, that are just cluttering up the soil that when God speaks, it is there, but we don't understand it and we cannot receive it. And because of that, the enemy comes uh, and steals uh, that word away. And we don't really hear what the Lord has to say. Do you hear what I'm saying tonight? It takes time. It takes time to cultivate your spirit. It takes time to cultivate your heart. It takes time for you, amen, to be in the presence of God. It takes time for you to be able to, to be in a place, amen, where God can speak. So my challenge to you is this. I want you to examine. I want you to examine the amount of time that you're spending in the presence of God. And I want you to say, Lord, by your grace, I am going to, I'm going to 
prioritize and carve out. I'm going to make more time in my life. How many can do that with me tonight? Amen. And I'm not, I'm not saying you have to pray all day, but I'm saying increase the amount of time that you are spending. But number two, I think the second reason that we don't hear the voice of God is we talk too much. Not enough time and too much talk. Not enough time and too much talk. Because we understand that prayer is not a monologue. <laughs> it's a dialogue. It's not where you dictate to God, but rather where you quiet your heart, your voice, your mind, and you allow God to talk to you. Because again, if you've ever been in a conversation where, with a person that dominates the conversation, how many know when somebody dominates the conversation, I shut down. I don't talk because they're doing all the talking. And also, if somebody dominates a conversation, usually that type of person doesn't want to hear what you have to say anyway. Am I right? <laughs> there are some people that are enthralled with the sound of their own voice. I don't know what it is, but they are. And I think many times in prayer, we are so inclined, amen, just to talk, to talk, to talk. And I know we do. We confess, amen, we worship, we do all of those things. But there must come a time in which you are silent and you are quiet in the presence of God. The question begs to be answered, why is it that we don't want to be quiet? Why is it that we don't want to be silent? I think many times we're afraid of what we might hear if we're silent, we're afraid of what we might see if we were silent. I don't have it in front of me. I just came to my mind. Uh, there was, a, there was a, an experiment with, with people. They were given the option of just simply sitting in silence with their own thoughts. Uh, and the majority of those people would rather, they didn't want to do it. The majority of those, they, they, had a, they had a choice of either sit in a certain amount of time with their own thoughts or take an electrical shock. Most people took the electrical shock simply because they didn't, want to, they didn't want to be quiet with their own thoughts. Let me tell you, we're living in a world right now that is so stressed, they don't know what it is to simply stop and allow the presence of God to bring the peace that Pastor Lee was speaking about from the Word. Listen, we've got to be silent if we're going to hear the voice of God. How many know what I'm talking about? Of course, the greatest example of, of, of that is Elijah, 1 Kings chapter 19, that you know this well. Elijah was commanded and said, he said, go forth and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And the Lord passed by and a great and a strong wind rent the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind came an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. Now, the great God that we serve, Jehovah, the creator, you would think that he would be in a very powerful manifestation of his voice. You would think the power of Almighty would come in a great and mighty wind that blows or a great and a mighty fire that burns or a great and a mighty earthquake to show the power of God. But to Elijah, he was in none of those. None of those. If it were up to us, we would think God would manifest himself in one of those dramatic fashions. But yet, the Bible said after the fire, there came a still, small voice. Why would God speak in such a quiet voice to a world that needs a blaring wake-up call? Wouldn't God shout and trumpet his voice so that we could hear him? But yet he chooses that small whisper. I wonder sometimes if God's speech patterns indicate how important he considers our listening. Because you see, if God shouted then listening would not be required. If God shouted, listening would not be required, but when he whispers, it causes us to stop what we are doing so that we can draw nigh and hear what he has to say. You see, when someone whispers a message, it assumes that the listener is close in proximity 
to the speaker. You that are sitting in the back, I'm not gonna whisper a message to you from up here because you can't hear me. But if I were to come back to where you are sitting and sit right next to you, I could whisper a message simply because I know you are close enough to hear me. You know why God, amen, whispers sometimes? Because the only people that are going to hear his voice are the ones that are close to him. Those are the only ones. Those are the only ones. People say, I don't hear from God. I don't hear from God. It's because you're not close enough. That's why. Bottom line. If God wants to get my attention, he can get my attention. No, he's gotten your attention a multitude of ways, but yet you have not drawn nigh unto him. Amen. That is why the Bible said, draw nigh unto him. Draw nigh unto me. Come close unto me. Let me tell you something. God has not moved. He's the same that he's always been. I said, he's the same that he's always been. Reminds me of the old story that you probably heard about the couple that had been married 50-some years. And they were driving down the road and, you know, driving in one of those awkward silences. Nobody was saying anything. He was driving and she was sitting over in the passenger side. And finally, out of nowhere, she said, honey, she said, remember the days when we used to take these long drives and we would snuggle together and we'd be right up next to each other as we drove down the road. And they were such sweet days. She said, whatever happened? The husband kept on driving, and finally he said, well, he said, the steering wheel hasn't moved. I think sometimes the Lord is saying, listen, I'm not the one that moved. You're the one that moved. And when he whispers, it's because he wants you to draw nigh. He wants you to be in close proximity unto him. How many remember those TV commercials of E.F. Hutton? Come on. Come on. Back in the 80s, you don't remember? Anybody remember those? Okay, good. I knew I wasn't the only, only old guy here. You know, there's a the big clatter of people that are around, and, the, and two guys are talking, and people are just doing their thing, and the one guy says, well, you know what? Uh, my broker says this. He said, what does your broker say? He said, well, my broker is E.F. Hutton, and when he says, my broker is E.F. Hutton, everybody stops and leans in. What would it be like if we were so close to God that when somebody hears us say, God spoke to me, they would know that you have heard from the voice of Almighty God? But you've got to lean into that. So my challenge, number two, is number one, take the time. But number two, I want, you to, I want you to be quiet. I want you to take time. I've told you this before. One of, my, one of my favorite times of the day is first thing in the morning when I'm just quiet. It's dark. It's quiet. Nobody else is around. And I have that quiet time of just, you know, it, it, there's just nothing like that quietness. And I believe number three, the reason is not enough time, too much talk. But number three, too much timidity. We don't hear the voice of God because we're too timid. We're too timid. Now, I want you to understand what I say by this uh, because I think many times we're afraid um, to go too far. We're afraid to really go into the, the depth of the Spirit of God, and we keep ourselves at a distance for whatever reason. And I'm not saying this to scold us because I've been guilty as well, but I'm just saying we, we, we only go so far, and then for whatever reason, we, we, we stop there. We, we know there's more. We know there's a, a deeper depth into the presence of God, but for whatever reason, we just stay where we are. But I believe that there should be a holy boldness that comes when we approach the throne of Almighty God. How many believe that? We are commanded that. In fact, Hebrews 4, the Bible said, we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. So therefore, because of that, let us come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Now, let me illustrate, if I may, this, because, church, this is why we're not hearing the voice of God, because there is a specific place in our time of prayer where God speaks. It is the holy place, because one might ask, where is the throne of grace? Well, let me put a diagram up on the screen, because when we talk about the holy of holies and the throne of grace, it refers us back to the Old Testament, 
It refers us back to God's, uh, amen, design of the tabernacle. And as you see this, you will see that most will stay in what we call the outer court, which is, of course, the brazen altar. That is the first step of our salvation where we come to the cross and we accept the blood of Jesus as the atonement for our sin. And many people will stay there, but that's, you know, where that's where the Gentiles stayed. It was that outer court. And that is the first step. But as we move further into the experience, we come, and, I, and I'm not going to, I can't teach this. There's, so, there's such depth to this that we might have to take an entire series just on the tabernacle. How many believe that would be a good idea? We may take an entire, I just felt like that. We may take an entire series on that. But then we come to what is known as the brazen laver. And that is a sanctification process, uh, amen, where the Spirit of God begins to cleanse us, uh, amen, cleanse us of attitudes and habits and mindsets and, and the things that we came out from the world with, uh, amen, that sanctification process. Uh, and then as we move into the holy place, uh, amen, we will begin to now see the Word of God, amen, and come alive to us. It's more than just a book. It's more than just a religious script, but rather we understand this is the living word of Almighty God. And as we get into this holy place, amen, the Holy Spirit becomes alive. We receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the illumination of the Holy Spirit. And as we get more into the word of God and we get more into the Holy Spirit, now notice what happens next. We come to the altar of incense. That is a place of spiritual praise and worship. And as we begin to worship God in spirit and in truth, because we know God is a spirit, John 4, Jesus said that, and they that worship must worship him in spirit and in truth. What would, go ahead and if you will, keep that diagram up. Thank you. Um, what we experience tonight in worship, that, my friend, is just a taste of the glory of God coming when we worship him in spirit and in truth. How many knew, how, how many really sensed there was a holiness that was in this place tonight? So as we get into that place, uh, amen, of praise and worship, what does praise and worship do? Praise and worship then is that which gives us access into the holy of holies. Now, you will notice the veil is there that separates the holy place from the holy of holies. And for you that know Old Testament tabernacle history, you will know that the only the high priest was allowed by God to go into the holy of of holies. So sacred this was that the high priest had to have a rope that was tied around his ankle. If there was any sin in that individual's life, amen, he would be smitten by the glory of God. Because how many know sin and the holiness of God cannot coexist? And they would have to pull that man out. But you see, that veil that was there, amen, that is the veil that when Jesus, as I preached on Sunday, cried out the words, it is finished. At that moment, the veil was torn from top to bottom because Jesus now fulfilled everything in the tabernacle that needed to be done. So now, not just the great high priest, not just the high priest, but any child of God can now come into the holy of holies and experience the presence of Almighty God. How many are glad for that tonight? Shout amen. That is the goal, my friend, is for us to transcend all of those steps and to be able to to walk into this place of worship and of praise. And that is why when you want to hear the voice of God, it will come only after you have spent time worshiping him in spirit and in truth. And you begin to lose yourself into the presence of God. And as you do so, then you will come into the holy of holies. And the Bible said you can come with boldness and expectation into the presence of Almighty God. How many believe that? Shout amen. amen. This is why many never hear the voice of God because they never get there. They're hanging out around the brazen laver. They're hanging out around the altar. They're hanging out in the outer court. And church, my challenge to you, no matter where you are in life, no matter where you are in your prayers, I want you to get beyond the outer court. 
And I want you to begin to press in. And I want you to understand that because of the blood of Jesus, you have access into the holy of holies. You have access. Now, not only do you have access, but now you must come with a level of expectation into the holy of holies. Amen. You cannot come timidly. You cannot come shyly. You cannot come and say, well, if the Lord wants to speak, he'll speak. No, you need to come expecting to hear from God because I believe God will meet you at your level of expectation. How many believe that? Shout amen. He will meet you at your level of of expectation. And I will say this, if you don't expect anything from God, then you will not receive anything from God. You will not. And I don't say that to be cruel to you, it's just a reality. Because if you, faith, <laughs> faith, without faith, it is impossible to please God because he that cometh to God, what? Must believe that he is. And not only that, oh, I believe God. I believe God. No, you got to get beyond that. He said, believe that he is and what? That he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> You have got to believe that the Lord will reward you when you get into the Holy of Holies and you will receive a word from God. And as you begin to believe that, you will begin to see the Lord open the windows of heaven and begin to speak into your life in ways like you have never understood before. Your mind will be illuminated. Why? Because you have come expecting to hear from God. Do you believe that tonight? Does that make sense to everybody? Glory to God. Mark eleven twenty four. Turn there. It's not going to be on the screen. You can take the diagram down. Thank you so much. Mark 11. But I want you to understand, this is what Jesus said. Mark 11. You know it well. But as he's teaching on prayer, he had already cursed the fig tree earlier in this chapter and then as they pass by, the Bible says in verse number 20, the disciples, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remembrance, he said, Master, behold, the fig tree which you cursed, it's withered away. So Jesus took this as an opportunity to teach them. And he said this in verse 22, have faith in God that whosoever will say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea and will not doubt in his heart, but will believe those things which he said will come to pass. He will have whatever he says. Now, verse 24, this is where I want your focus. He said, therefore, I say, what things you desire when you pray, you must believe that you receive them and you will have them. There's got to be a level of expectation and I know some here this tonight are saying, but pastor, I don't have that boldness. I don't have that expectation. Well, listen, here's what needs to happen. Amen. You need to do as Jude said. Jude said this in verse 20 of his one chapter epistle. He said, you beloved, what do you do? Build yourself up. I just need somebody to build myself. I just need somebody to strive. You don't need Oh, I know, we, 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 we give words of encouragement. But Jude said, build yourself up. How? Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Spirit. Oh, God. I know this is Wednesday, but I feel like preaching tonight. Pray in the Holy Ghost. As you pray in the Spirit, the boldness will come, and you will speak with an expectation. Why? Because it is not you that is speaking. It is the Holy Ghost that is giving you that expectation and that is giving you that boldness. And now you are praying in, amen, a realm of the supernatural, out of the, out of the natural, out of your mind. You are praying from your spirit, and that spirit is what gives you the boldness that you need to hear from Almighty God. Do you understand what I'm saying tonight? Paul said, <laughs> he said, be not drunk with wine, Ephesians 5. Be not drunk with wine where it is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. And I will say this, 
I don't want to pray without the anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost in my life. I don't want a dead, dried up religious prayer. I want the power of the Holy Ghost to be evident when I pray. Okay, it's Wednesday night. I can be vulnerable with you, right? Lest you think that I'm, you know, even tonight, as we were worshiping, I don't know if, well, I'm just going to say it. There was like this, this cloud was just hovering over me. It was, in, and for, for lack of a better term, it was just like a, a, a cloud of, a, a, a dark death cloud. And I began to think of, and, and, and the enemy l- began to put lies into my head like, you're going to die. You're going to die. You're going to die. Man, I'm putting myself out there right now. I'm just telling you what I went through. Even in the last hour, you're going to die. Your life is over. All of these thoughts began to come. And suddenly, <laughs> I, don't even know, I don't even know what was going on on the platform, but suddenly as I be- began to lift my hands, uh, I felt the Holy Ghost just breathe on me, and that cloud was gone. And suddenly, joy unspeakable and full of glory began to well up within my soul like a fountain. Uh, man, I-, I know you probably didn't hear me. Pastor Lee probably heard me. But I shouted. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, You know why? Because the devil tried to stop me from getting into the Holy of Holies. uh, But the Holy Ghost came and like a well sprang up uh, and the cloud was gone and the lies were gone. Uh, Why? Because I sensed God speak. uh, Amen. In the presence of God. Uh, Let me tell you something, church. Uh, The devil doesn't want you to hear from God, uh, but I put the enemy on notice. Uh, We are a body of Christ uh, that is ready to walk into uh, the Holy holy of holies and hear a word from almighty God and nobody can ever take that voice away from us because it's the voice of our heavenly father. Do you believe it? Shout amen. Hallelujah. And so tonight, my God, hallelujah. Come on, come on, Tom. I'm not even going to finish my notes tonight. Amen. I want you to understand you've got to take time. You've got to take time. You've got to take time. That time can even be driving down the road. You can be driving down the road and praying in the Holy Ghost. That time can be anywhere. You don't have to, you don't have to, you know, be in a in a, in a prayer closet. That time, the Spirit of God is everywhere. He's omnipresent. I can call on him at any time, but you've got to take time. Middle of the day, take those pockets of time to hear the voice of God. You've got to stop talking. You've got to stop talking. You've got to listen. You've got to quiet your spirit. And there's some of you here tonight, your spirit is so filled with anxiety and there's such a a storm that is just brewing in your spirit, man. And I don't know what it's from. I I don't know why it's there. I can't tell you what you've walked through. You know, but it's, it's there. It's just like this tempestuous wind. You've got to take time to quiet, quiet. And then get into that place of praise and worship. Get into that place of praise and worship. Put some worship music on. It doesn't matter. Just just, just get into that place of praise and worship. And get into the holy of holies. And come with a level of expectation. Stop being so timid. Stop thinking that God doesn't want to talk to you. Stop thinking that God is done with you. He's not done with you. He's not done blessing you. There's so much more. There's so much more. 